Section 1.4, solving in equations. The objectives for today are to solve equations and to solve problems by writing equations. You bought a mobile kit. You read on the package that the weight of the entire mobile is 40 ounces. Each inch of crossbar weighs one ounce. What is the weight of each shape? See the picture on page 26. So when you're looking at it and you have a 40 ounce mobile, um, the first question says, what does half the mobile weigh? Well, you take 40 and divide it by two. So 20 ounces. So you're gonna have 20 ounces on the left, 20 ounces on the right. Next question says, what is the weight of the crossbar on the left side? If the crossbar on the left side is four inches, and in the directions it said each inch of crossbar weighs one ounce, um, we have uh, four times one ounce, which would be four ounces. So the crossbar alone is four ounces. How much does the figure on the left weigh? If you have 20 ounces altogether and you subtract the four ounces from above, it's gonna weigh 16 ounces. Okay, so four ounces of crossbar and 16 ounces for the orange shape. What's the total weight of the, all the objects on the right uh, below the four ounce crossbar? So you're gonna have 20 ounces on the right again, and the four ounce crossbar weighs four. We're gonna go 16 ounces here as well. What does the figure on the right weigh? Um, we are looking at, let's see. Okay, so we wanna figure out the figure on the right. So underneath the crossbar, we have 16 ounces. So we're gonna start with that. Um, we have two inches on either side of the, of the division. So we really have four ounces of crossbar. So I'm gonna subtract that out. And then we have two more ounces of crossbar um, with the green shapes. Um, so 16, oh wait, I'm gonna back up. Okay. Okay, so 16, we're gonna subtract the four ounces um, and that's going to give us 12. And that's gonna be 12 ounces on the left of the uh, two ounce cross bearer and, um, oh, wait, 12 ounces on the right. We have to divide that by two. So we're gonna have six ounces left. So the figures on the right are gonna weigh six ounces. The figures on the left are also going to weigh six, um, or actually they may be a little bit different because of the crossbars. Okay, how much does each of the middle figures weigh? If we have six on the right, we're gonna have 16 ounces. Subtract six uh, two times and we're gonna have four ounces left. And if we divide that by two between each of the two green ones, we get two ounces per shape. So basically you're working with two even sets of sides. You have to keep dividing by two. You also have to consider the um, inches um, are then ounces as well. An equation is a statement that two expressions are equal. We have some properties of equality. You guys did work on these in geometry. If you've forgotten them, you can certainly write them down. Reflexive, uh, a equals a, or two equals two, or xy equals xy. The same thing on the left equals the item on the right. So whatever's on the left, it's the same on the right. Symmetric, if a equals b, then b equals a. So symmetric means we're gonna flip the left side to the right side and the right side to the left side. So it doesn't matter what it is, you're gonna flip it over. Transitive, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So these terms in the middle are actually the same. And if those two are the same, then the outer ones have to be the same as well. 
substitution. You guys do know what that is. You can replace any letter with a number or any um, number with a letter. Addition property, if A equals B, you're going to add C to both sides. So adding C to either of those sides becomes A plus C and B plus C. I'm going to write this a little different. I'm going to say add C. Whoops. Add C to both sides. For subtraction, if we subtract C from both sides, it looks like A minus C equals B minus C. So here's what you're starting with. Once you subtract C, that's what it looks like. Here's what you're starting with. Once you add C, that's what it looks like. And we'll do the same thing with multiplication and division. If you multiply both sides by C, it looks like AC equals BC. If you divide both sides by C, it's A divided by C equals B divided by C. You could also write it like this, um, which is exactly the same thing. You can't have C equaling zero because you can't divide by zero. The solution of an equation, solving an equation that contains a variable means finding all values of the variable that make the equation true. Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. For instance, if you have an addition equation to undo addition, you would subtract four from both sides. So our answer would be x equals negative 16. So here the only number that would make this one true is that if you substituted negative 16 in for x and you put it in there um, to check it, negative 16 plus 4 should equal negative 12, and it does. So you can always check your answer to see if they're right. What's the solution of the next one? Negative 27 plus 6y equals 3 times the quantity y minus 3. So first thing we're going to do on the right side is distributive property. 3 times y would be 3y. Three, 3 times 3 would be 9. The sign in the middle um, just comes down. Next thing we're going to do is get these on the same side, like terms. So we'll subtract 3y from both sides. It looks like I'm dividing, so I'm going to get rid of those. Um, which becomes negative 27 plus 3y equals negative 9. Now I'm going to do the opposite of a negative 27, which is add 27. And that becomes 3y equals negative 9 plus 27. That's going to give me 18. And then divide by 3 and divide by 3. y equals 6. If you'd like to check that one out, you sure could. I'll change colors to check it. Negative 27 plus 6 times 6, that would be 36. And 3 and 6 minus 3. Okay, negative 27 plus 36 would be... 9 and 3 times 3 also gives you 9. Um, a note is when you're checking, you don't want to switch sides with anything. You want to just keep it the way that it is and simplify both sides. If they equal each other, you're right. If they don't equal each other, you are not right. You can pause the video and try got it question number two and then check your answers. So distributive property a couple of times on the left. So 3 times 2x would be 6x. 3 times 1 would be negative 3. Negative 2 times 3x and negative 2 times 4. So negative 6x, negative 8. Now we'll put like terms together on the left. We get 0x minus 11 equals 11x. Remember 0x means that there's just nothing there. Um, if we divide by 11, we get x equals negative 1. You can certainly throw that in and check it if you wish, um, but negative 1 is the correct answer. 
Problem number three. I believe there's a picture. There's a picture on page 28 if you'd like to look at a flower carpet. Um, they incorporate hundreds of thousands of brightly colored flowers as well as grass, tree bark, and sometimes fountains to form an intricate design and moti motif. The flower carpet shown here from Grand Place in Brussels, Belgium, has a perimeter of 200 meters. What are the dimensions of the flower carpet? Um, again, see the picture on page 28. So um, when you're looking at this one, um, it says the perimeter is 200. So perimeter equals 200 meters. And the formula for perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So, so far, here's what we have. 2 times the length plus 2 times the width equals 200. Now, if you look at the picture, the length is x. So, let's see, x equals length. And the width equals 3x. So, we're going to substitute those in. I'm going to change this one. So, in for the length is x. In for the width would be 3x. And then we solve. So 2x plus 6x equals 200. 8x equals 200. And then your x would be 25 when you divide by 8. So distributive property, we're going to do like terms. We're going to divide by 8. Okay, so x is 25. It says what's the dimensions. So the length is going to be 25 meters, I think it was. Yep. And our width is going to be 3 times 25 or 75. Now, notice in mine, I have the length um, being the x part, that's what we defined it to be up here. Um, they have their length is the 3x because it's the longest one. As long as you have these defined properly, you can't really get them wrong. If you didn't define them at the top um, and you had the numbers switched, then you would obviously get them wrong. So um, make sure you define your variables at the top and you should be good to go. Um, you can pause the video right here and try got it question number three and check your answer when you're done. Suppose the flower carpet from number three had a perimeter of 320 meters. What would the dimensions of the flower carpet be? So two times the length plus two times the width equals 320. We had length equals x, width equals 3x, and we're going to substitute those in one more time. So we have 2x plus 2 times 3x equals 320. 2x plus 6x equals 320. 8x equals 320. Divide by 8, you get 40. So our length equals 40 meters, and our width equals 40 times 3 or 120 meters. Again, if you define your variables properly, um, your answer should be okay, even if you have them switched. An identity is an equation that is true for every value of the variable. Sometimes no value of the variable makes an equation true. So in this one, is the equation always, sometimes, or never true? First thing we're gonna do is simplify by sides. So on the left side, we have an 11 and a negative 7, so 4 plus 3x. On the right side, we have some like terms as well. 6x minus 3x would be 3x plus 5. Um, to solve this thing for x, we would subtract 3x from both sides. That would cancel out those x's on both sides, so we end up with 4 equals 5. Well, how many times does 4 equal 5? Like, never. 
So four never equals five, so this one's going to be never true. Because basically your x's are um, deleted when you're solving. So um, never if you have one number equaling another number and they aren't the same. Here's another one, let's simplify sides first. So on the left side we have like terms, we have four x plus five. On the right side we have like terms as well. Um, we have a 4x plus 5. Um, on this one, how many times is 4x plus 5 equal to 4x plus 5 always? You can also simplify a little bit further if you want. Um, if we subtract 5 from both sides, 4x is always equal to 4x. You could also subtract the 4x's and 5 is equal to 5. It doesn't matter which one you do there. It is always going to work um, regardless of what you plug in. You can pause here and try got it number 4. Again, we'll put like terms together. Um, so on the left side, we put x and negative 4x together. You get negative 3x plus 6. On the right side, we have 3x plus 4. We will get the um, x's on the same side, so we'll subtract 3x. Negative 6x plus 6 equals 4. Um... I'm going to back up on this one. Okay, so I'm going to back up on this one just a little bit. I am I was thinking solving this one, but we really kind of just want to think about what, um, what might be true. So um, on this one, when would negative 3x plus 6 equal uh, 3x plus 4 is what we're trying to, to figure out. Um, when you look at this one, um, first of all, the signs of the x's are different, and you also have different numbers. So I'm not sure that you're ever going to have this one equal the other side. Okay, so I just discovered why this one's not working. I wrote it wrong at the beginning. This right here is supposed to have a seven in there, and that's why it wasn't coming up. So 7x minus 4x would be 3x plus 6. On the right side, we had 3x plus 4. So um, if we subtract 3x from both sides, it deletes it. So is 6 ever going to equal 4? No, this one will never be true. The second one, um, distributive property. So 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 4 would be negative 12. 2 times 2x would be 4x, 2 times negative 6 would be negative 12. Now we'll put like terms together. 2x plus 3x would be 5x minus 12, and 5x minus 12. And if you notice that the left side equals the right side, you could add 12 and then you'd have 5x equals 5x. And basically anything that you plug in there is always going to be true. So this one is always. You could really stop right here because if the left side equals the right side, it will always work. A literal equation is an equation that uses at least two different letters as variables. For number five, the equation C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32 relates temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Um, Fahrenheit would be F, Celsius would be C. What is F in terms of C? So what's going to happen here is they want us to solve, instead of solving for C, they want us to solve for F. So we're basically going to carry out the... Um, process to reverse the letter that we solve for. So distributive property and then 32 times 5 ninths. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to do this different. I don't like using fractions. My calculator doesn't do them very well. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to multiply this side by 9, which will cancel the 9, and I'm going to multiply that side by 9 as well. So I have 9c equals 5 times f minus 32. 9c equals 5f minus 5 times 32 is 160. Um, I'm going to add 160 to both sides. 9c plus 160 equals 5f. And then I'm going to divide by 5, every single quantity. So it looks like this. 9c over 5 plus 160 over 5 equals f. Okay, now if I simplify this one a little bit, I get 9 fifths C just to make it look a little nicer. And then 160 divided by 5 is 32. So these two formulas are exactly the same. It's just that one is solved for C and the other one is solved for F. And let's pause the video and try got it question number five. The equation K equals C plus 273 relates the temperature in Kelvin, which is K, and Celsius, with, which is C. What is C in terms of K? Well, this one is much easier to solve for the other letter. If we're solving for this letter right here, we would subtract 273 from it. And that's really all we'd have to do. So K minus 273 equals C. And those two equations are the same also. Is the equation relating temperatures in Kelvin and degrees Celsius always, sometimes, or never true? When you're looking at it, um, they are exactly the same equation, just represented differently. So they will always be true. Um, bring questions tomorrow. We'll go through them and we'll also um, practice a little more.